Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome to The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Happy New Year! 2021 is looking like an interesting year already, from the mutation of the infamous COVID-19 virus to a mob breaking into the Capitol Hill in the United States and taking siege for four hours. But let's leave Sokoto, like we say in local parlance, and come back to Sokoto. In other words, let's return home. I'll be kicking things off talking about the one too many demolitions in Lagos. Chuka will be taking on the paternity controversy, which has gone viral in Nigeria for, for days now. Jumoke, often accused of being a whaler herself, is taking us through the fine art of whaling. And she'll be talking about the president's New Year speech. Evans will be asking the hard question about preparing a will. Why do we wait till the point of death before we do that? And lastly, Bolahon advocates for us to be responsible, especially in the light of the second wave of the pandemic. We'll be back in a moment. I'll be talking about Monkey Village, one demolition too many. Sometime in November 2019, the story of a girl who was refused the issuance of international passport by the immigration office in Ikoyi went viral. The teenage girl missed an opportunity to represent Nigeria as a guest of the United Nations and Amnesty International at an international children's conference in Geneva. Her name is Aisha. Aisha lived in Monkey Village until the 31st of December 2020 when it was demolished. Monkey Village, an urban slum in the same neighborhood with Okwebi and Ikeja suburb was demolished without prior notice to the residents. The Lagos State Ministry of Fiscal Planning and Urban Development has since taken responsibility for the demolition, claiming that it was to reclaim wetland. Reclamation of wetland, they say. In reality, Monkey Village occupied 10 plots of land belonging to seven individuals who gave out the land to the residents pending when they are ready to develop the place. Clearly, the residents were not illegal occupants. Moro Nrotsi Ashabi is the Ashuju Asha Udua. She runs Helping Hands, one of the charitable organizations working there with food and medical supplies as well as Medicare. The organization raised money to treat Taiwan Kende Koka and nurse them into good health. Betty Abba runs Sea Hope Foundation, another organization in Monkey Village that supports about 200 children in the community with education and personal development. It's ICT center where it teaches computer literacy and a borehole for the community now lie in ruins. Shelter is one of the fundamental necessities of life. The others are food and clothing. And the court says, Everyone, rich or poor, deserves a shelter for the soul. Given this fact, three things are worth noting in the matter. That residents of Monkey Village were not given prior notice before the demolition, that they were not allowed to save any of their belongings, and that Lagos State has a pattern with destroying urban slums that borders on feeding the very source of criminality in the city that needs to be checked. General comment number four, the United Nations Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights states that the human right to adequate housing is the right of every woman, man, youth and child to gain and sustain a safe and secure home and community in which to live in peace and dignity. Now, governance is a collective. 
the executive, the judiciary, and the legislative arms of government exist in Nigeria. I therefore advocate that the legislative arm of government in Lagos State institute hearings into the incident, especially that there are additional allegations of land grabbing associated with the demolition. As we speak, 400 people are now homeless and destitute. We remember Morocco, Makoko, Badia East, Ilubiri, and recently Otodogbame, and now Monkey Village. The Lagos State House of Assembly must not let this be a recurring decimal in Lagos. No one, no matter the status, should leave home and return to its rubbles. It is inhuman, mean, and oppressive. I remember the Otodogbame one um, very, very clearly, and how the Lagos State government under Governor Ambody at the time, you know, defended themselves. They didn't want our waterways to be full with hoodlums. They also mentioned at the time that they'd given them um, notice, but the residents never moved anywhere. And I said that as much as I agree, at the time that you, you do not want um, as many as 100 slums as we have in Lagos, in fact, 100 and counting, you know, you also want to ensure that you don't push these people into crime right. and that you don't render them homeless to the extent that they have no choice you know, than to go into crime. If you give them notices and they remo re refuse to move because a lot of them are fishermen who have just migrated you know, from one slum to the other through Badagri, you know, through the waterways of Lagos, then you want to maybe create some sort of alternative for them to go to. If not, you just don't come at that time with Otodobame, come with guns in the middle of the night on a Sunday night, you know, and then just chase them out. You know, so I agree with you. This is a recurring decimal in Lagos State. Unfortunately, the Lagos State um, legislature is, in my own opinion, a rubber stamp. They are in the same political party with the government at all times, and um, I, I usually call them twenty over twenty. Yeah, <laughs> as in they always win, you know, during the elections, and they never do anything against their party. The Ministry of, um, you know, Physical Planning must have a resettlement plan because we have we have this issue where people have habited in a place for so long. I learned that uh, they also went to uh, Snake Village. This Snake Village, they call it um, Snake Island. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, the other time also to make some uh, destruction of uh, properties and all that. I'm thinking here that the Lagos State government, you know, when you say Lagos is the center of excellency, you expect that the government should have developed capacity in every area of their administrative life. So they should have a, a resettlement plan. If you don't want a community to exist because you have reasons that uh, they could have beat hoodlums or block waterways and all that, this is the same waterways that you're not even utilizing. You are not <laughs> using, you are not utilizing for transport, but then you don't want people there. Uh, fine, you don't want them there. Okay, create an alternative location for them. So that they can be there while you develop whatever you want. That's, but this, this attitude of just busting into the place and say we gave them notice they did not hear and start to destroy mm -hmm. things and all that is is it's a no no for me. Right. Typically, no. when you say you give people notice, let's assume there was notice. Most likely, there will have been notice anyway. There was no notice. Now, when you give people notice to move, there that presumes that there's a place to move to. Exactly. Yes. So where there are no places to move to. That notice is mute. People, it, it has no effect. They will just, they will just be there, True. essentially. True. Now, Monkey Village, um, that name Monkey, the, the was, not, was not arbitrary. There were monkeys there mm. in that place. Ordinarily, in a sane environment, that place should not be built. It's not for human habitation. It should be preserved mm. and allow those monkeys to just be there. To so be their natural habitat. Yes, that is not our own case. I remember several, this is more than uh, almost two decades ago now, um, when somebody had brought a project. At that axis, for me, I was in banking then. The reason we could not do that project then was because it was said to be a green belt. That thing was meant to actually be preserved. Mm. 
I was surprised one day when I went around that Oregon side, and part of what they said was meant to be preserved has been built up. Now, that portion that is built up was built up most likely by people that are bigger. Mm -hmm. okay. So, I, so when the small people now do the <laughs> same thing, they don't get the same treatment. That is one of the problems. Let's take Chuka. Mm. They don't get yeah. the same treatment. Chuka. I agree. Yes, I agree with Bona. Um, and, and in fact, everybody, actually, I, I like all the comments so far. And um, the thing is that town planners in Nigeria are a disgrace to Nigeria. They don't know anything. And I want <laughs> any of them who wants to contest this, my statement with me to do it anywhere, I will come and meet them. They are a disgrace to this country. That's why we have problems like this. And that's why they are able to give government the audacity to go around and harass people and kill them and get them out of where they live with nowhere to go to. You should have somewhere for them to go to before you tell them where to go. Who would have arranged somewhere for them to go to? Who would have found a place for them if it's not the hopeless town planners that we have in this country? That's what the problem is. Town planning and urbanism is a huge problem in this country. And, and all they do is just go around addressing themselves as town planner Peter Smith instead of <laughs> Mr. Peter Smith. Meanwhile, they do nothing. That's what the problem is. The, pr okay. the problem with tit so, titles, um, Shmokeyos will be the last two, Yes, comment. two things quickly. Um, in defense of Lagos State Government, usually they say that they are unable to deal with the um, population explosion in Lagos. Millions of people trooping into Lagos, overstretching the facilities. Well, that is Lagos for you, and um, it's a Nigerian problem. We need to deal with it. But um, there's a joke about these monkeys, because they come within the estates <laughs> next door, and they'll carry your pot of soup. From fire, so now I know why. It's because we are the ones inhabiting their space. We are the ones inhabiting their space. And, there are, and those, people, their space. those people who invented their space have argued that human beings have not seen space to live. <laughs> you you are used to live there. Monkeys the monkeys everywhere. are protesting, and that is what we are having. Right. After the break, Evans will be telling us what the rabbi taught him this week. Stay with us. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.